POV Italian cooking where you see cooking from my point of view. I call it that because I use a GoPro camera. I use the chest mount um, so you can see kind of through my eyes as I cook. This is Josie. She just wanted to be in the video so I told her she could be because she's so cute. Um, but anyway, uh, tonight we're going to make spaghetti alla puttanesca. And depending on the stories that you hear, uh, there's a couple different stories about the history of puttanesca. The first is um, that it was it, it translates into uh, spaghetti and garbage sauce. Uh, the story behind that is that you know some southern Italian chef uh, had guests and he didn't have the ingredients to make his normal sauce so he just kind of threw together everything he had and said that's ah, a garbage sauce. Now the other story you're going to hear a lot is that it was um, used by brothels to lure men in to the ladies of the night so that way you know they, they would smell that that the smell of the sauce and it might encourage them to come in to see the hoolahs. Um, and so you know whatever story you believe that's fine now th this um, this uh, recipe is kind of a modified version of what you'll find in the book Extra Virgin by Gabrielle Corcus and Debbie Mazur um, you know, I shared in a previous episode that they're kind of my uh, favorite cooks my favorite show um, so let's get started so we have all of our ingredients laid out. Really before we start going through our ingredients, two things. First, this recipe is an homage to the Extra Virgin Cookbook by Gabrielle Corcus and Debbie Mazur. It's kind of a version of their, uh, their spaghetti a la puttanesca. I, again, I, I look at a recipe, I kind of know what flavors I like and that my family likes, so I always alter the recipe a little bit. Um, also, before we get started, we're finishing off the bottle of wine that we started the other night. That's the last glass, and then we're going to get started on this Ventoso. Um, so we've got our nice glass of wine here. Quick sip. So, our ingredients. We are going to start with a, a lot of puttanesca folks will use the uh, fresh tomatoes. We're going to our standard Cinto San Marzano peeled tomatoes. We're going to use the entire can. We're going to chop these up a little bit. Uh, we'll, we'll put them in the food processor for just a quick chop. We, st we want that chunkiness. Uh, we're going to use about a third of the can of, of olives. Now we are going to um, slice those. We're going to use a pinch of red pepper, salt and pepper to taste. Not going to take a lot of salt. You'll see why. We're going to use probably three or four cloves of our garlic. We're going to use anchovies and capers. That's why we're not going to need a lot of salt. It's going to be a little briny anyway, so we're going to have to be real careful when we start salting. And we're going to use a pound of spaghetti. We've got some parsley. This is for garnish. And this parsley is out of the garden. I still have good looking parsley. It's December here in Ohio, almost January. Um, and it's hard to believe I still got flat parsley that looks that good. I have the water on behind me to get it hot while we're preparing everything so it will be nice and hot ready for us to drop our pasta we're going to do a good al dente pasta and finish that pasta in our sauce once we get rolling so i'm going to break away real quick to kind of reorganize my workspace and we'll be right back all right we're ready to start our prep the first thing we're going to do is let's go ahead and get our garlic ready so on our garlic i'm going to come over here now ah, let's just break it up right here. We're going to use, I don't know, three or four cloves. Again, go with how much garlic you feel is right. If you like garlic, put three or four. If you don't like garlic, use two or three. So we're going to start with these four cloves. That's probably enough. All right, I love garlic, so I'm going to go with that. And these cloves are kind of small, so I'm going with five. We're going to do the quickie. Smash them. And they'll clean up real quick for us. Look at that. Getting much quicker about this. Okay. And five cloves. Get the skin out of the way. Let's go ahead and get these chopped. So the wife and I are still off on our Christmas break. She started 
taking decorations off the tree. I did have to go into work for a little bit today and I've promised her tomorrow the tree comes down. She's got pretty much all the decorations done so Christmas is behind us and we can start planning for our New Year's party which will be just us and the kids. All right, you know what? That's probably a rough enough chop. Doesn't have to be anything special. Again, this is quote unquote garbage sauce. Now, the next thing we're going to do, you can probably just buy black olives already sliced. I didn't. I bought the whole olives mainly because I'm probably going to eat some of them while we're gone. Not too long ago, I hated olives, I hated wine, and I hated Italian food. But now I kind of love it all. So, let's throw this in the trash. And we are going to go with about a third of this cup. Again, I've got the water behind me heating for my pasta. So that way when we get our sauce going, I can drop the pasta. Because it's going to be... The sauce needs to cook once you get it going about 15 minutes. You want your always want your pasta to be al dente and finish it in the sauce. So it kind of soaks up the flavor and the... Uh, Spaghetti only takes about nine or ten minutes, so it's going to work out real good once we get everything going. It's black olive ha. Oh, yeah, this is pretty good. Um, as you can imagine, if you you know if you are an olive eater, olives are briny. Capers, if you've never had a caper, capers as far as brininess are olives on steroids. Then we're going to use anchovies as well which again, briny and salty. So we may not need a lick of salt. We'll be, uh, we're not gonna put a drop of salt in until we get our pasta or our sauce all together and then we'll give it a quick taste. So just about got enough olives. I'm probably gonna go with a little more than, oh, than a third of the can just to be sure. We'll put all these sliced ones over in a little bowl I got. And then we'll probably pick a few out of the can just to eat. All right, let's go with four more and then we're gonna be done with our olives. And that will give us two of our ingredients already. That one, we'll eat too much shape in one. All right, our olives are ready. I'm not gonna worry about the parsley for now because parsley is gonna be a finisher so we're not gonna worry about it on prep. We will yeah, about a tablespoon of capers we're going to just rinse those right before we put them in three four or five anchovy fillets we'll drop them right in i can hear the water behind me just about boiling it is boiling so we're going to turn it down about halfway that way it'll all be ready next let's get our tomatoes ready again we're using the whole peeled tomatoes i want a little bit of chunkiness in there but not the whole tomato so tonight we're going to cheat we're going to use our food processor because it's just quicker. Make sure we get all of our good sauce. Top on our food processor and we're just going to pulse because we want those chunks. And that's probably good enough. I want it good and chunky. So let's get this can out of the way. We're going to leave our sauce there for now. And I think we're ready to start the prep on our sauce. So I'm going to pause so we can move over to the uh, stove and I'll be right back. Okay, we're set back up by the stove. Got everything out, all of our ingredients. You can see our water's on. We got our pasta and I went ahead and brought our uh, tomatoes over here. They're still a little chunky since we just pulsed them. So the first thing we're going to do is get our olive oil in the pan. That's probably enough olive oil. Again, we just kind of eyeball it. Turn on our heat. I'm gonna start it on high because I wanna I just want to get the olive oil hot. I love olive oil. Once that I start hearing it crack and pop, we're gonna drop in our anchovies. We're gonna drop in our capers and our olives and our garlic. Pan is getting hot. Just so you guys know I I did wash my hands after holding the dog in the intro. I just want everybody to know I, I washed my hands, even though she's probably cleaner than most of us. I did bring over the wine as well. You always gotta have your wine close by. It makes cooking even more fun. Uh, crank our water a little bit. 
Okay, I can feel our olive oil starting to get hot. So, you gotta be careful with garlic. If it's the only ingredient that you have in, garlic will burn. I'll get this cutting board out of the way. Go back over. We're gonna do all. See how our anchovies come out. There's two. So we just want to use a good anchovy filet as well. These ones are kind of clumped up. I've had them in the fridge because I used them a while ago. Go a few more. Yeah, there's two fillets there, so that's good. And for our, I'm gonna to go to the sink with the capers because we only we need about a tablespoon, give or take, and they need to be rinsed and chopped. So give them a quince, quick rinse. I'm gonna turn the heat down. Go over here real quick and chop these. Just a rough chop to let out the juice and the flavor that you find in your capers. Gotta be real careful that pan's hot and I hear it, so I'm gonna get back over here quick so I don't burn my garlic. Okay, that's good enough on the chop on these. So everybody into the pool, scrape that off out of the way and there we go now we're going to let this go Whew. hot pan hot pan we're going to let this go about three or four minutes and our goal you're going to see that these anchovy fillets are just going to melt away which is what we want we're going to go ahead and kind of break them up we just want them to get integrated into the sauce don't forget our red pepper flakes again red pepper just to taste that's probably good enough right there. If not, we can add more. You can't take them out. So, this is the briny base for our sauce. Let that go. Just a few minutes here. Wow, that's got a real strong smell. Which is exactly what we want. Let me turn that heat back up. I want my pain to get too cool. Oh, everybody's in the middle of the pool here. And let them simmer probably about another minute. I am while I'm standing here. I'm going to go ahead and get the top on our capers and our anchovies. And I can see my hands reek of anchovies. So let's go over here. Quick wash. And cleanliness is next to godliness. An anchovy smell is next to the worst smell in the world without being part of a recipe. All right. Good sizzle on everything. Wow, that smell. Got about another minute on this. You can see our anchovies are nearly, you nearly cannot see any piece of them. Now there's a little piece right there and we'll just kind of set down in the oil and you see there, broke up and it's down next to nothing. I am gonna add just a tiny, tiny bit more of our red pepper flake. Okay, so it has been about two minutes, so we've got one minute more on this. And then our sauce goes in. This is one of the most simple sauces you can make. It's this and our tomatoes, our can of tomatoes. Now, a lot of people will use fresh in this. The Cento canned tomatoes are so easy and so good to have around the house. I use them in so many different recipes. So shout out to Cento for a good product and know they're not a sponsor. Wish they were. All right, been three minutes. In with the sauce. Another good sizzle. I'm gonna put this in the sink, quick rinse. Make cleaning easier. And... Get that on for just a second. There's our sauce. We are going to stir this up right into our wonderful sauce. Get everything incorporated, including the olive oil. This is a recipe I have never made before, but it's been on my 
my hit list. I've been wanting to make it, so I thought, hey, what better time to make it than for the next video? If there's a recipe out there that you guys have always heard about or thought, oh, that's got to be too hard, I've seen that about, I said that myself about a lot of different recipes. And I'm to the point, again, I'm a home cook with no culinary experience. Let me turn this back off. I'm at the point where I'll give anything a shot because I'm at this point not scared of screwing up. If I mess something up, it'll be in the video. If I completely destroy it, it'll be in the video. I'm going to try. I've been, the bane of my existence is bread. I cannot make bread. The only bread I've been had any luck making is focaccia. And that's because it's a, it's a flat bread that's supposed to be flat. For some reason, I can't get my breads to rise. I can't get them with the nice holes in them and whatnot now. I, and I try and I try. So we're going to make an Italian bread or a, and a Tuscan bread in a future episode. And it may not go as planned. So we'll see what happens. If I burn it, it'll be on the video. So this, we're going to... We're gonna let this do a good simmer. You can see it's getting nice and bubbly. So we're gonna turn it down. We're gonna go, we're gonna go up here to our timer. 15 minutes. Okay. We're gonna let this simmer for 15 minutes. In about five minutes, we are gonna drop our spaghetti, because spaghetti takes nine to ten minutes. And that way everything will be done at once. Once our spaghetti's done and I get it drained, we're gonna finish it right in this pan, right in the sauce, and we will go from there. So, I'm gonna go ahead and cut away for a little bit, let it simmer on medium, medium low. On my stove, it goes to 10. I've got it on about four. I'll probably settle somewhere in between four, and right around four, three and a half, four. So let it set, we'll be back in five minutes and drop our pasta. Okay, we're back, it's been about five minutes. So we've got right around 10 minutes left. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and drop our pasta. Crank my heat up on my water, I've kinda had it sitting there so it'd be nice and ready for me. I like to break my pasta in half. Some Italians, they say I've committed a mortal sin. Since I don't have a drop of Italian blood in my body, I can I can feign ignorance. Um, I just do it because it's easier to eat. Um, all right, so grab a spoon. We're gonna give that. Let that go. As you can see, we've got a really good bubbly simmer going on in our puttanesca. So let's give it a try. Try to get with nothing in it, but just the sauce. Wow. This needs a little bit of pepper and a tiny, I got to get a new pepper grinder. It barely, barely grinds and I refuse to use ground pepper. I want to grind it myself because this is the way I've been told to do it. Tiny little bit of salt, a tiny little bit of salt, and that's all she needs, and that is gonna be some good sauce. It's already, even just after simmering for five minutes, it's starting to thicken up really good, so that's gonna be good. Now one thing we are gonna do as well is, and I learned this from watching shows and whatnot, and I, there's been times where I've tried to make Italian food in the past and I didn't have enough sauce or it was too thick. Well, you'll see on a ton of cooking shows, they save their pasta water. Because if you run a little bit short on sauce or you need it to thicken, the pasta water will actually serve as both a, you know, it'll add some, if you're, if you just don't have enough sauce, but the starchy water will also thicken your, your, your uh, pasta, your, your sauce as well. Um, so we've got a good boil going on our pasta. We have seven minutes. We're leaving our, our sauce to simmer. I'm gonna turn it down to three again. I got three to three out of ten on my uh, on my stove. We're gonna let that simmer. 
Um, while we're waiting on this, let's do this. I'm gonna turn that down just a smidge. Let's get our parsley ready. The parsley just serves as a topping to our finished dish for a little bit of collar. In this house, we put Parmesan on pretty much everything, so I will grate a little Parmesan as well over top. And this, again, this parsley came out of my garden, which is kind of hard to believe that in December I'm still taking parsley out. My basil's long since dead. All the tomato plants are long since dead, so I've, I have parsley and I have kale. And you better believe we're going to use every bit of it we can because here in the dead of winter, we'll be wishing we had this fresh stuff at, right at our hands. So and I've, went, I've already rinsed this, so I'm just trying to get the leaves off of it real quick. We're going to just do a nice rough chop to this as well. And there we go. Good enough. Nice and messy. Um, let's pile it up real here. Chop, 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 both ways. Restack. Sure, there's a culinary term for restacking. I use the word restacking. Sorry if the camera's shaking a little bit. It's really hard to wear a chest mounted camera and not shake while you're cutting, especially when you're in a hurry because you got stuff behind you boiling that probably needs stirred. Okay. That is good enough. Looks good. Leave it on our cutting board. We're going to go back here. Give our pasta a quick stir after we knock over the can opener. I got to slow down and not be such a spaz. Look at that simmer on this sauce. Ooh, buddy. Okay, and since I added the pepper and the salt, I'm going to give it another taste. Taste early, taste often. Wow. Oh my gosh, since I started making my own sauce and cooking, woo, that's got some brine to it. I've never been able to eat canned pasta or canned sauce again. Growing up, it was, you know, when you wanted spaghetti, you made ragu. Um, never again will I make ragu. The sauce is so simple. I, one other time I did a, a marinara which you guys may see in a future episode. I did, I made a marinara sauce that I got out of one of the recipe books. I believe it was out of the Extra Virgin. And I thought, I wonder what this would be like creamy. So I threw some heavy cream in it, and then I threw some Parmesan in it, and just kind of let it thicken. And oh my gosh, I ended up taking that sauce, putting it over ziti, throwing it in the oven and baking it with a little bit of, of uh, mozzarella over it. And man, it was incredible. All right, four minutes left. I'm gonna go ahead and break away get the parmesan cheese out ready to grate when we when we plate this so i'll be right back <laughs> all right we're back uh i was just giving my wife a hard time she's walking through here tonight is laundry night and she was uh, putting the dish towels back in the drawer so giving our pasta a stir we've got about 10 seconds left you can see our sauce i've got it turned down on low because it is thickened up just a little bit it looks really good you can see some a little bit of tomato chunk in there okay that's our timer let's make sure that our quiet beeper let's make sure our spaghetti is al dente well let's try it again um, without getting the ever-loving tar burn out of us ow 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 that's perfect Pull that off the heat. Now what we're going to do again, I want to save my starch water. I'm not going to worry about, I'm going to let it drain just a tiny bit and plop her over here. Turn my heat up because I want to finish this in here. Let's mix up our sauce. Within there we want, you want your pasta to not be quite done yet because you want the last little bit of moisture it gets to pull in to be your sauce pull that over in there yeah we got some room for some more sauce again this is a southern italian recipe either a garbage sauce or a 
lady of the night huba sauce um depending on which stories you believe that looks pretty good got some more let's put a little bit more spaghetti in there let this kind of cook for just a second in this sauce you can see here it's already it's absorbing what little bit of moisture we had it's a wonderful thing we're going to transfer this to a nice pasta bowl again a gift my beautiful daughter got me and my wife for christmas back out of the way grab our pasta bowl dump it in to our beautiful pasta bowl which is just happens to be the Daruda line from I believe Sterling Cobb. Look at that wonderful pasta. Now what we're going to do, let's put it up here. We're going to take our parsley for a little collar. Sprinkle, sprinkle, sprinkle. Look at that. Gives it a nice pretty collar. Take our imported Parmesan and give it a good sprinkle. This is a nice, firm, kind of dry Parmesan, so sometimes it crumbles. And I'll tell you right now, there's no such thing as too much Parmesan. I love it. So a nice liberal amount right on the top. And there we go. We have made spaghetti alla puttanesca. That sounded really good, didn't it? it? Sounded really Italian from a guy with no Italian blood in him. So let's get this plated and do a taste test. So honey, you want to be in the uh, taste test portion of the video? Um, you need to ask Scotty because I'm not wearing a bra. <laughs> okay, honey. Um, I'm going to go talk to my son real quick and I'll be right back. I'll put a bra on tomorrow night. All right. <laughs> All right. So my gamer son, who's in the middle of a League of Legends game, anxiously awaiting the taste of the spaghetti a la puttanesca. So take a big bite, Scotty, and tell me what you think. Really good. Really good? Mm -hmm. How's it taste? Like, what's the taste that you get from it? Got to describe the taste. You can't say good. I don't know. Does it taste light? Does it taste heavy? It doesn't taste heavy. That's for sure. Light. Oh. I would say lighter. Okay. What are you? What game are you playing? League of Legends. And who's your favorite character? What do you like? What? What's your role in the game right now? Uh, right now? Yeah. I'm playing jungle, but that's isn't my favorite role at all. Okay. And just so you guys know, those those glasses are not prescription. Those are the wonderful gaming glasses. So, Scotty, what's your what's your Twitch tag? Uh, Twitch.tv slash Elite Gamer Guy. Okay. And your sponsor? Uh, Neosync. Awesome. Okay. Well, thanks. We're going to head back upstairs for our final shot. Okay. So, this is my first big taste of the pasta here. Let's give it a shot. Again, this is... Spaghetti a la puttanesca. It's an homage to the uh, extra virgin cookbook. Again, I just kind of modify everything to, to my particular taste. Mm. You know, Scotty said downstairs, it's good. As my brawless wife says, it's full of flavor, but very, very light. Yeah, I'm going to get smacked for that one here in about five minutes. Um, it is great. It's got that good briny flavor um you know the olives the capers the the anchovies really give it a good flavor it's not too strong easy to mix up as you guys saw you know it's got it, it simmers for 15 minutes the the ingredients are so simple if you buy sliced olives um really the only thing you got to do is rinse the capers and uh chop up the garlic so this is something you can do real quick at home so Thanks for watching. I'm really looking forward to getting comments. Um, so please comment on the video. Let me know what it is that you would like to try to cook. 
if I'm doing something wrong, especially with my knife skills, tell me about it. So, uh, thanks for watching, and you know, check again, check again soon for the next episode of POV Italia. Today's wine that we paired with the spaghetti puttanesca was Viticcio Chianti Classico 2009. Real good, full-bodied Chianti. Um, highly recommended. Informed of uh, future episodes, just click the subscribe button in the lower left-hand corner of your screen. Yeah, if you have any comments or you want to learn uh, to, how to prepare a particular Italian dish, put that down in the comments below. I'll read all the comments. Um, don't forget to uh, follow us on social media. Uh, if you look on Instagram at instagram.com slash POV Italian, on Twitter at twitter.com slash POV Italian, and on Facebook at facebook.com slash POV Italian. If you'd like to contact me by email, you can uh, contact me at povitalian at gmail.com. You know, uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you later. Ciao!